Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Here we are. It's uh, September. <clears throat> Saratoga's closed. Del Mar, I think, is closing this coming weekend. We're on our way to the Breeders' Cup, I guess. On our way to the Breeders' Cup, Matt, at beautiful Keeneland. It's only eight weeks away, folks. And with that introduction, of course, we're going to talk some Breeders' Cup this week. Our first look, Matt, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Let's take a look at and what we did here. There, there are other horses that may wind up in this Breeders' Cup Classic field. And there are some on this list who will not make it to the Breeders' Cup Classic. But right now, this is our sweet 16, if you will, Matt. We put our top 16 down for the Breeders' Cup Classic. And you see the uh, early, early odds there dominated by Flightline, Matt. Uh, Flightline has looked really, really good. I think that's an understatement. He's looked really, really good in five lifetime races going back to his debut last April out in California. I guess, I guess the specific classic was his best race yet, but that's saying something because his first two, first four races were pretty special as well. Yeah, absolutely. All five races have been, uh, uh, you know, tour de force kind of races. And certainly Flightline did not disappoint either you or I uh, with his performance in the Pacific Classic. We both felt like the two turns, we both felt like the distance would not be a factor, that uh, he would handle the, this, the, the field that he was facing easily. And that is what he did. He handled them easily. Uh, uh, another victory by enormous lengths in a, you know, in a fast time, uh, doing everything that you would expect from a superstar horse. Doing it easily, Matt Shipman. Doing it easily. Uh, yeah, it, super impressive. He had never been two turns before. Um, you and I never thought he was a sprinter. He's a son of Tappet. And he made this mile and a quarter race look like a walk in the park. Uh, people compared it a little bit to the Belmont Stakes from, oh, about 49 years ago. And I could see that because he ran fast early and then he just kept on going, much like Secretary did in that 31-length uh, win in the Belmont Stakes so long ago. Not Secretariat. He's only had five lifetime starts, but uh, if you still think, well, this is a horse who's beaten up on nobody, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be revealed when he runs in a tough race, I, I think you don't understand what a good horse, a really really good horse, a special horse looks like. You could see it in the mornings, you could see it in his workouts, and you certainly could see it in every race. Matt, I'm I'm pleased to see that he's able to lay off horses just a little bit he he doesn't need the lead we saw it in the met mile and that was precipitated a little bit by speaker's corner um forcing the issue on him as he broke a little slow in the met mile and he was kind of squeezed down in the rail once or twice early but then again here in the pacific classic uh he let another horse go out for a little while and then he just took over and he kept on going uh, you know i Anything can happen in horse racing. I think Flightline is the best horse of this that I've seen in this 20. Where are we, Matt? The, the 22nd century, the 21st century with Flightline. I forget what century we're in. He's so good. But anyway, I think he's the best horse I've seen this century. That includes everybody. And I know he's only had five races. I'm a proponent of running horses more often. I hate to see a great horse like this not race more often. But gosh darn it, that's how good I think he is. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you, Brian. I mean, he is definitely as good as any horse that we have seen uh, uh, this century, whoever, you know, whoever you want to mention, Arrogate in his, in his few races uh, that, that he ran when he was at his best. I think Flightline is better than that, you know, Gunrunner who got so good at the end of his career and, 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 swept along to, through uh, uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic at the end of his career. I think Flightline is better than him. And I was, you know, uh, Horse Center fans can remember, I was a huge fan of Gunrunner, still am 
a big fan of uh, of gun runner uh, uh, th- there's hard to find anything negative about what Flightline has done in his five races yeah no it, it it's it's more than finding anything negative it's 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 all superlative all five races whether it's the 108 debut or the 159 geared down pacific classic runaway who did he beat I, I'm not here to tell you country grammar is the greatest horse in the world. I never thought country grammar is the greatest horse in the world, but the horses that are running 19 plus lengths, 26 plus lengths behind them all are all multiple graded stakes winners who have experience at 10 furlongs and uh Lightline treated him badly. It is horse racing though. Anything can happen on a given day. He's got to go to Keeneland for the first time. He's, he's got to go East again. Uh, you never know. He could have an off day. That's why we're talking about the Breeders' Cup Classic right now. Matt and I think he's that good. If he runs his race, he will be the Breeders' Cup Classic winner uh, in eight weeks. But uh, there's uh, a bunch of good horses here on this list, Matt. And I think the number two horse for me, uh, without question, is Epicenter. Because Epicenter has been good all year. He's proven at a distance. He's run good races at classic, classic distances. Uh, despite the speed figure, I thought that Jim Dandy was his best race to date, even better than what he did early in New Orleans or his seconds, unlucky seconds, if you will, in the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. But then he not only came back with that Jim Dandy performance in the Travers, I think he trumped it in the Travers. He's only getting better. Epicenter, the three-year-old, for my money, is the biggest threat to flight line in this Breeders' Cup Classic. Um, I guess uh, I agree with most of that, Brian, and, and I would say that he gets into that category of the biggest threat to flight line because he ran such a bang up race in the Travers, going a mile and a quarter distance uh, of the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. Um, he still has to step up and face older horses. Um, I guess for me, uh, life is good is the most talented challenger for flight line but with life is good there is still the big question about the mile and a quarter distance right if, if the breeders cup classic and and todd pletcher frankly he hasn't uh, he hasn't said the breeders cup classic is a done deal uh we could still find life is good in the breeders cup dirt mile i don't think so and, and, I, and i think the sporting thing to do is to go after the breeders cup classic with life is good one certainly one of the best horses in america and, and a very very talented horse as you say I, i'm not crazy for the race he ran in the dubai world cup um his first try at 10 furlongs they say it was a very slow uh tiring track that day and maybe that got him when country grammar beat life is good in the dubai world cup early this year Tell you the truth, I wasn't <clears throat> crazy for absolutely overwhelmed by his performance in the Whitney. That just didn't give me the impression of a horse who really wants 10 furlongs. Life is good, has big speed. Flightline has never had to chase a horse like life is good before. So that alone is interesting. And, and like you say, life is good, huge talent. Could show up and run his best race in the Breeders' Cup Classic uh, at 10 furlongs, especially if he gets the lead, especially if flight line lays off him just a little bit. We'll see. He'll get a prep in the Woodward, which is, uh, I guess, October 1 at Belmont. That's a one-turn nine furlongs at Belmont. So life is good. We'll be expected to do very well in the Woodward. Matt, next on the list uh, is is Olympiad, and you know maybe there's some disrespect at, at fifteen to one on the morning line, but I, I just don't see Olympiad getting a whole lot of, of money with the top three horses in there. Assuming life is good, wins the Woodward, uh, Light Line, big favorite, Epicenter, life is good, clear, uh, second and third choice in either order. Then then you drop back a little bit to Olympiad, but he's frankly he's been terrific this year, six of seven. No horse has won five graded stakes like Olympiad has. No other horse. Olympiad is a good horse, and the Jockey Club Gold Cup was a good performance. It was a good performance. Got back to, uh, you know, and, and I think that, you know, Bill Mott deserves a lot of credit. Olympiad deserves a lot of credit to bounce back from a lackluster performance. Um, 
uh, in the Whitney to to run so well in the Jackie Club Gold Cup, get back to running races uh, in that same exact running lines that he had shown in all of his other victories in that win streak where he stalked the pace in second place and took control of the race by the time they got to the top of the stretch and drew off and drew off confidently. All of that was back uh, in the jockey club victory going the mile and a quarter distance. So uh, you, you, he's, you know, a legitimate challenger. And I think, uh, you know, uh, I think Bill Mott, he'll go to the classic and take a shot with Olympiad, I think for sure. Yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, Bill Moss not afraid to take a chance. And Olympiad, you know, uh, like I said, a really big year. It was nice to see the son of Spites Town not only prove he can get 10 furlongs, prove he can win a grade one, prove he can win a big race at Saratoga. He did all of that in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. The one thing I worry about Olympiad as I'm handicapping this field, though, Matt, is you, you kind of said it. He, all of his wins, six wins this year, but all of them, he's been able to sit right off the leader, pounce take over the race as they straightened out and, and be strong down the stretch. That becomes a difficult thing to do when you have life is good and flight line ahead of him early. Uh, I worry that this race is not setting up for Olympiad because he certainly likes to win a certain way. And that'll be tough in the 10 for Long Breeders Cup Classic with the horses ahead of him. Next time on the list, Matt, is one of the more interesting horses on the list. Super lightly raced, Tybeth. Uh, neither of us liked him for the Kentucky Derby, and he pretty much failed in the Kentucky Derby, was a little close to that crazy pace and 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 didn't have much in the stretch. Real good return race in the Haskell, though, narrowly beaten by Cyberknife. Taiba could be moving forward. He's working well. We expect him in the uh, Pennsylvania Derby in a couple of weeks. Taiba is a horse who could move forward. Could move forward for sure, and and uh, the Pennsylvania Derby I think is a good spot for him to you know uh, uh, get a win, uh, make a step forward from that win. Certainly in a field in the P Pennsylvania Derby that you know I I don't think is shaping up to be the strongest uh, uh, field at this point. Right, and and I think there is a gap after epicenter I, I think we saw that in the travers where there's a gap between epicenter and the next best three-year-old so one of these three-year-olds would have to really step up taiba is one who could do it but it, it's a big step up now not just talking about epicenter and the gap between the best three-year-old and the second best three-year-old but now we're also talking about these top top older horses the next horse on the list is cyberknife who beat him in the haskell and was a game second, holding off some pretty good horses in the stretch in the Travers to be second. But no match at all. No match at all, Matt, for Epicenter. No, absolutely not. And Cyberknife has had an absolutely terrific three-year-old season with the grade one victories that he uh, has gotten with a gutsy win in Haskell over, over a good horse in Taiba that we mentioned. And, and, and a, a good effort in the Travers. Um, yeah, Epicenter was a better horse in the Travers. Uh, Cyberknife uh, hung in there and battled out and hung on to second place uh, far behind Epicenter. I don't know if the mile and a quarter was pushing the distance limitations of the horse. The good news for Cyberknife is he really improved from the first mile and a quarter race, which was the Kentucky Derby. And excuses aside, he didn't run well in the Kentucky Derby. He did improve in the Travers, but yeah, it just seems like a, uh, a, a big hill to climb for Cyberknife. Brad Cox trained Cyberknife. Uh, Brad Cox certainly has had some success in the Breeders' Cup and one of the top trainers in the country these days. Cyberknife has been a really good three-year-old Haskell win, Arkansas Derby win, uh, good second in the Travers, but kind of like Olympiad for me. Really nice horse, really nice year, but how's he going to win the Breeders' Cup Classic? I guess we could say the same thing about Hot Rod Charlie, Matt, who just hasn't been able to win of late. He ran a very good second in the Dubai World Cup at a mile and a quarter. He's run good races at classic distances, the Kentucky Derby, uh, the uh, the Belmont Stakes, of course, and, he, and even last year's Breeders' Cup Classic. 
He's lost three races in a row now. He's come back to America, uh, carried wide in the Whitney. Um, was never going to get to Life is Good, though, as Life is Good was weaving in and out. Uh, maybe that wide trip uh, coming out of the turn cost him a little bit. But he was third in the Whitney. We're starting to wonder if he's going to win uh, a grade one race again. And, and now we look at the Breeders' Cup Classic as the toughest grade one race you can get. Yeah, Brian. And, and I don't, you know, I don't exclude the chance from my mind that Hot Rod Charlie can, can win a grade one race at some point if he come, comes back and races next year. But... I don't think that grade one race is going to be in the Breeders' Cup Classic uh, in a couple of months. Yeah, and, and he was a pretty good fourth last year. He, he faded just a little bit. Um, uh, a couple of horses out, a couple of three-year-olds out finished him in the Breeders' Cup Classic behind Nick's go. But I, I think this Breeders' Cup Classic is shaping up even tougher than last year's. Last year's Breeders' Cup Classic was good. This year's Breeders' Cup Classic could be better. Maybe the most interesting horse on this list, Matt, is Charge It. Um, more so for me than Ty, but Charge It has a very high ceiling. Just like Flightline, he's had five career races. Uh, just like Flightline, he won his last one by an absolute joke and a pole. Uh, but unfortunately, he missed the Travers due to a foot abscess. And unfortunately, he hasn't been back on the work tap since. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about that with Charge It because, you, you know, heading into the Travers, the, the, the foot abscess issue, uh, uh, trainer Todd Pletcher made it sound like it was a close call about whether he could get into the Travers or not, but they were being cautious and they said they would wait and, and he'll get to the Pennsylvania Derby. And, and now already... Uh, um, Pletcher said he he's not going to be ready for the Pennsylvania Derby. So obviously there's a little bit more going on with the foot issue than uh, he thought at that point. And that's the way, you know, hoof issues are with horses. Sometimes they can be nagging and take a long time to, uh, 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 to heal up. So um, I'm not sure when we're going to see charge it again. Yeah, at this point, it looks most likely like he would be a horse to look for maybe in the Cigar Mile. He's not going to make the Penn Derby. I, I, I don't think the Woodward uh, on October 1 looks very likely. Uh, another Pletcher after life is good, but charge it a world of potential, a son of top it. Uh, we'll wait and see when he comes back. Another Pletcher on the list, Matt, American Revolution. American Revolution, uh, I thought would have a better chance to beat Olympia than he did in the Stephen Foster. Um, he, he, he was uh, given a little bit of time. The Stephen Foster was only his second race of the year. Uh, but he really, uh, he, you know, he had every chance at, at the head of the stretch with Olympiad, and Olympiad was simply better. American Revolution is a nice horse, only runs good races. Um, Jockey Club Bow Cup, I guess, was his first try at a mile and a quarter. He could improve a little bit off that, but couldn't get by Olympiad, and I don't necessarily love Olympiad in this Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, no knock on American Revolution for his performance in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. He ran very well. He just ran into Olympiad, who was at the top of his game again. Absolutely. A nice horse, a nice New York bred horse, American Revolution. Zandon is another nice horse, Matt. He, he runs nothing but good races. Zandon is the winner of Keeneland's biggest rates so far this year. The Bluegrass looked very impressive at Keeneland. Third in the Kentucky Derby, uh, second in the Jim Dandy, third in the Travers. We're starting to get that hot rod Charlie type of feel with Zandon. A little disappointed he could never get by Cyberknife for second in the Travers. Um, I, I still think he could improve. He's still three. He still hasn't raced a whole lot, but he's not winning these races since winning the Bluegrass. Yep, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, you always get varying opinions on this. I think this is a very good crop of, of three-year-olds, and, and he's amongst the the top of them um but uh 
Uh, yeah, he's just not quite there now. I think if he comes back and runs next year, uh, the the extra time could make a difference. So my feeling is that I, I, I don't have the feeling that this is the kind of horse that Chad Brown is going to run in the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup. Yeah, we'll see. Um, horse for course, maybe he loves Keeneland. Maybe that could help, but we'll see on Zandon. Next horse on the list, Matt, I fully expect to be in the Breeders' Cup Classic. His name is Country Grammar. And on the one hand, he beat Life is Good. He beat Hot Rod Charlie. He beat a good field in, in the rich Dubai World Cup at 10 furlongs. He's a two-time grade one winner at a mile and a quarter. But then you look at the Pacific Classic and you say, well... Maybe country, maybe country grammar is not in the in the same zip code, the same class as the horse we have listed as the favorite here in the Breeders' Cup Classic. No question about it. But he's got that big bankroll. He's got that huge number of of earnings uh, from his trip over to the Middle East. And hey, I guess Brian, there's nothing particularly wrong to say that you were second to Flightline in that blockbuster. Uh, Pacific Classic. Uh, that's true. Uh, unless you look at margin of victory, and then maybe there is maybe there is an issue with that second in the Pacific Classic. I can see Country Grammar getting better, getting away from Del Mar. Third uh, race back off the layoff. He certainly likes a mile and a quarter. Bob Backert has horses ready for big races. But is he going to get 19 and a quarter lengths better? Maybe flight line. I, you know, I've seen a few people suggest that Flightline will bounce off that big effort. I, <laughs> but Flightline doesn't doesn't really bounce uh, as far as I can see so far. Country Grammar would have to uh, turn the tables in a huge way to uh, get the best of Flightline in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Another Bill Mott entry on the list, Matt. Uh, Art Collector. I wonder. I wonder where Art Collector will end up in the Breeders' Cup. Um, I think there's a good chance we see him in the Woodward trying to defend his impressive victory in the Woodward last year. And that could set up an interesting pace battle in the Woodward if, if it's him and life is good. I wonder if Art Collector will go back to the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, a race he tried two years ago. Last year, Breeders' Cup Classic, he really wasn't around for the stretch run of that. Um, another nice horse. Uh, he's got speed. But uh, I don't know. He, he did win the Bluegrass. I, I guess this is another Bluegrass winner that we should mention at Keeneland. Another nice horse from uh, from Bill Mott, who's got, you know, a couple of good ones heading into the Breeders' Cup. Uh, yeah, Brian, I mean, just, just look at the record of uh, Art Collector. 19 career starts, 10 wins. That's impressive. Uh, he's won a lot of money. I know they've, uh, they've picked their spots judiciously with this horse. Uh, Winning the Charlestown Classic and a big purse there, uh, the Aladar, but he won the Woodward last year. Uh, uh, a really nice horse. Do I expect Mott to send Art Collector into the Breeders' Cup Classic? Probably not. I think he is the kind of horse that the Dirt Mile is designed for. Yeah, the Dirt Mile might be more likely for Art Collector. Or maybe he he looks for other spots like the uh, the Clark or the uh, Cigar Mile. But our collector, uh, if he's in, he'll he'll make his presence known at least uh, out there on the early lead. Finally, we go to an international horse, Matt Mishriff. Mishriff is a really good horse who's a, really likes a mile and a quarter. Um, the dirt form is sort of there. Uh, a nice win in the Saudi Cup in 2021. But his Saudi Cup this year was a real head scratcher. But uh, he's coming around on turf, mile and a quarter. Like I said, that's his distance. He comes out of a good second behind the best turf horse in the world last time. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, uh, you know, he runs against the best. He runs against the best in the Middle East. He runs against the best in Europe. Uh, with a recent second in the in the Judmont Grade One, he was third at Royal Ascot. Uh, um, it'll be interesting to see if he uh, makes the trip over for the Breeders' Cup. And if he does make the trip over, uh, I, I think he's an interesting horse, an interesting long shot to think about for the exotics. Like I said, he loves a mile and a quarter, and uh, he's a horse who you know he's he's running against this class regularly. 
Happy Saver, Matt. Uh, Happy Saver is a horse who has become the new Jacques Hu uh, of American racing with all those second place finishes. Matt, he has not won a race, Happy Saver, since his uh, since an allowance win at Belmont Park early last year. It's 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 going on a year and a half since Happy Saver found the winner's circle. Yet he has run a lot of good races. Yeah, he's run a lot of good races, a lot of good races in the best races uh, in the country, second in the Whitney, second in the Met Mile, second in the uh, Ali Sheba, second in the Clark, second in the Jockey Club Cold Cup in 2021. Um, different racetracks. Um, I guess, you know, if he goes in the Breeders' Cup Classic, uh, uh, can he run second again? Well, his past performances certainly say he's a he's a horse to uh, think about for second. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. The last three races, um, uh, Flight Line uh, beat him in. I, I, I'm sorry, uh, Life is Good beat him in the Whitney, and and Life is Good. You know, there was some race riding there with Irad Ortiz. A lot of race riding with Irad Ortiz, carrying Hot Rod Charlie out on the turn, and then going sharply on the inside to. Um, impede the progress of happy saver I, I i don't know what happy saver would have done if uh life is good ran a straight course i don't think happy saver would have won the whitney uh but he could have been closer to life is good in that whitney we he, he's a horse who's run well in a mile and a quarter he won the jockey club gold cup as a three-year-old but uh then you look at the whitney and before that the met mile against flight line and before that the uh, uh ali sheba against uh olympiad and you see a horse who's just not quite truly threatening those really good winners of those races. So an interesting horse, another Todd Pletcher on the list. Matt, uh, I, you, let, let me say this, first of all, about the next horse on the list. This, this I, I need to make a disclaimer because first captain, first captain was my top pick in the jockey club and he could do no better than third in the jockey club. Having said that, I think he ran a pretty good race. Uh, the pace was slow. He was pretty far off it. And he was carried well wide on the first turn. And uh, he was running between horses. And he was running well in the stretch to be a, a clear third in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. I think with a different pace scenario, the Jockey Club Gold Cup could have been uh, a little better, maybe a lot better for him. He's a horse I think is still getting better, son of Curlin. And with a strong pace that's almost assured here in the British Cup Classic, he is the horse that I'm looking to include underneath in the exotics. Sure, why not, Brian? I, I, I agree with all those kind of things. I think I would reiterate with uh, uh, First Captain with I, what I've said about other horses. Sure, he's got a chance to run a good race in there, but, you know, uh, running behind the likes of the top three or so four that we've mentioned flight line epicenter life is good olympiad that's a tough uh tough list of horses to crack um and 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 get in there he could do it um and i certainly look for him to run next year and, and who knows yeah, first captain is, is an interesting horse to me because of his development. I also think he really wants a mile and a quarter. Matt, I'm also thinking that this pace is such that if flight line's as good as we think he is, he puts away horses like Life is Good and Olympiad at some point uh, on the turn or, or straightening out. It makes it hard for those horses to to want to go on and stick stick for stick around for second or stick around for third especially if the pace is fast in a mile and a quarter race. That makes me think a horse can rally into second or third in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And first captain's a horse I like. A lot of people will tell you that could be Rich Strike, not the Kentucky Derby winner. They, they were given hope by his Travers. It was fourth, but he was close to second. Right there was Cyberknife and Zandon. Couldn't quite get up for third or second in the Travers. Maybe he'll get those fast fractions that he so badly desires in the Breeders' Cup Classic. 
well, I'm sure that the 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 legion of Ritz Strike fans are encouraged by his performance uh, uh, when he, as you mentioned, finished fourth. Um, and and they should be encouraged. It was a much better performance than we had seen from uh, 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 Ritz Strike since the Kentucky Derby. Agreed. I'm I'm still not liking him as much as other closers in the Breeders Cup Classic. First captain, a horse I just mentioned, for instance. But uh, he's the Derby winner. He should be in the Breeders Cup Classic, and he'll get a better pace. All right, Matt. Time for our we're, what we're going to do. Kind of normal for our show, folks. But we're going to do our top pick and our top long shot pick for this Breeders Cup Classic eight weeks out. Of course, yeah, with the field, we don't know the draw. Don't don't tell us how can you make picks when we don't see the draw or all that sort of thing. But we want to have some fun here with this Sweet 16 for the Breeders' Cup Classic. So we're going to make a top pick, a top long shot pick. Matt, who's your top pick in the Breeders' Cup Classic? <laughs> My top pick is uh, Flightline, Brian. Of course, I think uh, I think the biggest question with Flightline in the Breeders' Cup is uh, 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 not whether he's going to win the race, because if he's in the gate uh, on November 5th at Keeneland for the Breeders' Cup Classic, He's going to win the race. But, hey, when you say it's horse racing, I agree with that. And we've seen it before, you know, with horses heading up into big races. Uh, things can happen, and they don't make it into that field. I think they are going to be extremely, extremely careful with uh, flight line in his training up to the Breeders' Cup of Classic. But you never know. Horse spikes a fever or this or that or the other thing. To me. That's a bigger risk than if Flightline is in the gate for the classic, will he win? He will win. I'm not going to disagree with you. No surprise at all. I think Flightline is a, a special horse, and I, I, I like the fact that he's been able to sit off just a little bit, sit off horses the last two starts. Um, he could face a big field here for the first time in his career, Keeneland. Ten furlongs, good, good, really good speed out there with him. Uh, there will be new tests, but... I think this is a special horse. He's working like a tremendous machine out in California before the Pacific Classic, and you saw it in the Pacific Classic. Maybe more interesting now here, Matt, is our top long shot. I kind of tipped my uh, hand a little bit. I talked about first captain as a horse, I think, getting better, a four-year-old, still pretty lightly raced, will like a mile and a quarter, and could, and, and could be passing tired horses here and, and could be ready to run a lifetime best in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He's my top long shot for sure. How about you? My top long shot is Happy Saver, Brian, and and I and I talked about the reasons why a little bit uh, when we were doing our rundown. Uh, Happy Saver finds a way to run really well in big races, as he's done in the as as he's done in those races that I rattled off earlier. And let's face it, Brian, we're talking about when we look for top long shots, horses that are going to fill out the exacto. Or the trifecta, maybe, and Happy Saver will be my pick. Exactly, and he's a proven mile and a quarter horse, as is my first captain, Matt. And those are horses who could be big odds in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and we hope they can run second or third for these uh, exotic payouts. Maybe even fourth. Fourth would, you know, you get a forty to one shot in fourth, you could be happy. All right, Matt. I, I don't know where else we go from this with our first look at the Breeders' Cup Classic, but it is time for your famous parting shot here on Horse Center. Yeah, I'd like, and I'd like to say congratulations to Flightline and all the connections of Flightline, the, the, the major shareholders, all the partners in groups like West Point Thoroughbred. Congratulations. Enjoy the run up to the Breeders' Class, Cup Classic. And as always, I want to thank everybody for watching the show. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for everybody watching. Thanks to Candace Curtis, our uh, our friend here in Kentucky for the race graphic uh, eight weeks ahead of time. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so now. Turn those notifications on. We also want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars, Matt. Also, uh, there's been talk uh, from uh, a couple of his many connections that Flightline might come back and race at five or, or is at least more likely to race at five than to be retired. So 
would not be a good thing. On that note, we're going to leave you here on Horse Center next week. Matt and I are going to take to the turf, turf on Horse Center next week. We'll see you then right here on Horse Center.